welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how I crochet bikinis. Let's talk about materials. You're going to need some scissors, a tape measure, some crochet hooks, and a stitch marker. Lastly, you're going to need some yarn. Now, the type of yarn that we use for this project is very important. I do not recommend using cotton yarn for a project that is going to be coming in contact with water because it just soaks it up and loses its shape and it's just not fun to wear. What I do recommend is using bamboo or rayon yarn. I have this nice blend here. This is Bamboo Fair by Premier Yarn and they are excellent. The weight of this DK is quite thin and it looks really expensive once it's worked up into a bikini. Now that we have all of our materials, let's get started. Thank you very much for watching. The way to ensure that the bikini top is going to fit your bust well is to measure from your nip down to the base of your boob. And for me, that's a little over four inches or 10 and a half centimeters. That determines the length of your starting chain. I made my starting chain 10 and a half centimeters long and it ended up being 25 stitches. The next step is to chain two more stitches to that. Now we will be double crocheting down the line. For this first row, we will be skipping two stitches. Yarn over, insert your hook into the third stitch down, yarn over and pull through one. Then you yarn over, pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. That is a double crochet, again. Yarn over, insert your hook and pull the yarn through. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. I'm going to continue this all the way down the line. Here is what your piece should start to look like. Now when we get to the very last stitch here, we are going to treat it differently. We're going to double crochet into it two times. One double crochet into the stitch. And a second double crochet into this stitch. Now we are going to chain two. One and two. Then double crochet again into that same stitch. Then we will be continuing down this side of the line. I made it to the end of the other side. We started here and went all the way around. Now what we need to do is chain two and turn our work. Once we have turned our work, we are going to double crochet into that first stitch. Then continue to double crochet all the way down. I have worked all the way to the spot where we did the chain two earlier. Now when you get to that chain two, you're going to double crochet into it twice. One, two. Then you will add two more stitches and then you do two more double crochets. This is the pattern that we will be repeating throughout the entire piece. And we're just going to go around and around until it's the desired size. I'm going to work on this for a while and I will see you later. The cup is now nearly finished. I'm just going to complete this row and then I think it will be a good size for me. You could really make it as large or as small as you like. Once you have completed two of these cups, it is time to add on the straps. You can either connect the two pieces here, putting the strap along the bottom and two neckties up top, 
or you could turn them this way, which is actually typically my favorite way to do it. Here is an example of one of them where the two pointed ends meet in the center. This one is the more classic triangle bikini shape. While we're here, I thought I'd also show another way that you can put these together. As you can see, the possibilities are endless. I have decided that I am going to connect these in the center right here. I also want to make this project pretty colorful. So for the straps and other details, I think I'm going to start using the purple yarn. One trick I have for ensuring that adding the new color looks nice is to first go all the way around the piece with the same color. That way when I stitch in the purple yarn, it doesn't look messy on these kind of different edges. Just start on one corner. I am going to insert my hook into this corner stitch here. Then I will pull out my blue yarn and attach it. Now it's time to go through along this edge that doesn't have the normal looking stitches up on top. We need to make those right now. So I'm just going to evenly stitch all the way across. I made it a little further down the line and decided it would be best to add a little stitch marker right where we began so when we make it all the way back around we know where to stop. I just made it up to the first corner. To make the stitches look nice and even, instead of just putting one stitch, I think you should put two or three. So one, two, three, and then just continue to single crochet down to the next corner. I made it to the part where I want to join these. It's quite easy to do. So all you're going to do is continue crocheting down to the very last stitch. There we go. And then you find the stitch where you next want to insert your hook, which would be on the other piece. Insert your hook and do a nice tight single crochet. Make sure there it is pretty tight, right, especially right here, just to make sure there's not a weird gap. Then you continue crocheting along. I crocheted all the way around back to the stitch marker. I just took it out here. Um, just to round it out, I am going to crochet two stitches into the last stitch and then I will slip stitch just into that first one I made. It's now time to start on the straps. I am going to start by chaining a starting chain that's about 20 inches long. I'm going to add five more just for a little bit of extra length. One, two, three, four, five. Now we are going to be attaching it to the bra cup. Insert the hook into this first stitch here and just do a single crochet. I will then keep going all the way to the end here, just doing a single crochet. Now I'm going to chain the same amount of stitches that I did for the starting chain. For me, that was 125. Now both straps are attached to the bottom of the piece. I want them to be a bit thicker though. What I'm going to do here is chain one, and then I'm going to half double crochet all the way down to the end of the other strap. So to half double crochet, you yarn over, insert your hook into the second stitch from the hook, pull through, yarn over, and then pull through all three stitches here. Again, you yarn over, insert your hook into the next stitch, pull it through, yarn over, and pull through all three stitches. Here's what it will start to look like, and I'm going to go all the way down. I'm just going to slip stitch and cut the yarn. And pulling it out. 
Now we are going to start on the upper straps. I want to continue this same thickness of border along this edge and then create the necktie strap from here. I will be single crocheting all the way down toward the waistband. Now that I've crocheted all the way down, I am going to chain one and then I'm just going to half double crochet all the way back up. Now I'm going to be chaining on 25 to create the necktie. Don't mind this little part where these aren't connected. We will add those together later. I went ahead and crocheted 125 stitches. Now I just will half double crochet all the way down the line, just like I did the other straps. I am left with this here. I'm going to zoom in so you can see what I'm doing a little better. You are now going to single crochet into this spot right here. I'm crocheting into some of the purple stitching just to give a little more seamless look. So just single crochet and make sure that's nice and tight so we don't have weird gaps. Then you're just going to single crochet all the way down to where the two cups meet. It's time to repeat everything on this side. So we're going to start here and go down with single crochets. Come back up with half double crochets and then chain 125 or whatever desired length you want for a strap. Then half double crochet all the way back down and then single crochet down to the center. This next part might look a little bit complicated, but trust me, it is worth it because I made these cups a little too large for me, so when I tried it on my body, it just wasn't giving me a lot of support. What I'm going to do is essentially close the gap on the top. I'm going to now match up the two cups and place the hook through the stitch, the last stitch that I made, and then through the last stitch of the second cup. And I'm going to take my string and just pull it through all five loops. Now we're going to match up the next two stitches, that's this one and this one. So we're going to take our hook and put it through all of them and then we're gonna take this string and pull it through everything there we go and I'm going to continue this up about six or seven times it's really up to you how close you want it to be then you're just going to do a little stitch there to secure it now here's what it looks like on this side this is the wrong side it's kind of bulky um, but it looks really cool on the other side. I'll flip it over. Here's what we've got. It's kind of like a nice V. I'm planning to put scallops from here to here on both sides of the cup. Firstly, just do one single crochet into the next stitch here. Then put a stitch marker in the corresponding stitch on the other side. To create your first scallop, you're going to yarn over, skip one stitch, and go into the next stitch. Insert your hook, pull through, pull through two, and pull through two. That was just a double crochet. Now we're going to do five double crochets all into this one stitch here. So I just did one, now we're going for two, three, four, and five five double crochets all in the same stitch. Then like you begin it, you're going to skip one stitch and slip stitch into the next. So you insert your hook, pull through, and then pull that through the other loop on your hook. There is your first scallop. I'll show you how to do another one. 
Skip one stitch and five double crochets into the next. That was five double crochets. Now you skip one and slip stitch into the next stitch. You're going to continue this pattern for as long as you'd like. I'm planning to end just about here. Depending on how big you made your cup, you're going to have different amounts of stitches to me, so I suggest ending right here or a little bit past it. Here is where it stopped. Now it's best to mark on the other side where you ended on this side. So how I'm going to do that is by counting the stitches. We first did that one single crochet at the beginning and then for every scallop it is four stitches. So I'm just going to multiply the amount of scallops by four and add one. So four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32, 36, 40, 44 plus one, so 45. I'm going to count including this marked stitch all the way up to 45 over here and place my stitch marker. I placed my stitch marker on the other side and now I'm going to continue on by single crocheting all the way along. And when I get to the edge, I'm going to single crochet all the way back down around the other side so that I'll end up here. And then I'm literally going to go all the way around the entire piece. Now that I've crocheted up to the end of the first strap, I'm just going to go all up and around it. I would recommend doing two stitches in each of the top two just to make a nice rounded circle. And it should look like that. When you get to one of the two spots that look like this, all you need to do is put your next stitch about one or two down the strap. Just do a nice tight single crochet right here and keep single crocheting down the line. It should look like that. Two hours later, I finally made it to the spot where I put the stitch marker. I went ahead and did a single crochet into that stitch and now I'm going to start the scallops. So I'm going to skip one stitch and do five double crochets into the next. I've come all the way to the stitch marker and you should have ended with your last scallop at the stitch before. Then since we started over here with a single crochet, we're just going to put one single crochet into that space. All right, now all of this scalloping and stuff is done, so I'm just going to cut the string off. And here it is from the front. It looks a little uneven, but once I weave in that end again, it will it will even out. Here she is, looking pretty. I am now going to start on the bottoms. I'm going to use a pair I made previously as a guide. I'm going to be making much longer straps that tie together, and then the bottoms will more or less be exactly like this in the front, and then in the back, I'm going to make them a little bit higher up with a bit more coverage. To begin the bottoms, I am going to crochet one more of these long strings here. This one is 35 inches long and the next one is going to be 45 inches long. So I am just going to continue this starting chain until it is 45 inches. My starting chain is now 45 inches long. You really could do this however long you like as long as you can tie it on both sides with the other string. Now I'm just going to half double crochet all the way down. So I'm yarning over, inserting my hook into the second chain from the hook pulling through, yarn over, pull through three. Yarn over, insert your hook into the next stitch, pull through, yarn over, pull through three, and so on. I'm going to go all the way down to the other end. Now that all of the stitches have been half double crocheted into, I am now going to do a round of single crochets all the way around the piece. So I'll start here by doing two single crochets 
in the first stitch and then one single crochet in each stitch all the way down. This will round the piece out nicely and make it the same thickness as the straps on the top. Once you reach the other end, kind of like how you did the top straps, make sure you put two single crochets in each of the top two stitches. This strap is complete. I'll just be slip stitching into the next stitch here to end it. I have both straps here. It's time to start on the rest of the bikini bottom. I'm going to start with the front first and I'm choosing to use my shorter string, though you could make them both the same length. It's really up to you and what style you want to go for. To find the center, I'm just going to match up the two ends and fold it in half. However, you could count out your stitches for a more exact number. And then I'm just using a stitch marker to mark the center point here. My example bottoms are about 42 stitches wide, but I want mine I want to add a little bit to mine, so I'm going to start with 46 inches. So I'll just be dividing that by 2, so 23 and I'll count out 23 stitches from the stitch marker. From this point I am going to attach my blue yarn. Then I am going to yarn over and into that same stitch I'm just going to do a double crochet. I'm then going to double crochet for 46 stitches total. I now made it to the end of the row. I've got 46 stitches and the center is where I had my stitch marker. Now it's time to turn our work, but before that, go ahead and chain two. Then turn the work. And now what we're going to be doing is decreasing our first stitch. So we'll insert the hook pull through and then insert our hook into the next stitch and pull through. Then yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Then you're just going to double crochet all the way to the end. Now reaching the end of the next row and I'm going to do what I did last time. So chain two, then I turn my work I insert my hook into the first stitch and pull through. Then I insert my hook into the next stitch, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, and pull through two. Then I double crochet all the way until the end. I'm going to continue with this pattern until my row is 14 stitches wide. So I ended up working with that pattern all the way down by decreasing with my first stitch of every row and I made it all the way down to 12 stitches. Also did the same thing that I did for the front to the back. For the back, instead of starting with 46 stitches, I started with 48. I just found the center of my top piece and went out by 24 stitches and then went across with double crochets, decreased, went across again, decreased, went across, same thing. This just creates that nice triangle shape. I also stopped at 12 stitches. So the bottoms are almost done. Now we just have to sew the two halves together. To attach the two halves, I left one long string at the end of one of them and I'm going to be sewing them together with a darning needle. It's really simple. I just go in through the first stitch of both pieces and pull tight and then I just go all the way down the line. So I find the second stitch and pull tight, the third stitch and so on. I just went through the 12th and last stitch. Now what I like to do is insert my hook just through um, a thread or two and just do a little knot and a second one. So just put your needle through, pull it, and then stick your needle through the loop. 
and pull. Now you have it pretty tight and secure. Here's what it looks like on this side and on this side. Now all you need to do is weave in all of your ends. Now that all of the ends are woven in, I want to put some sort of decoration on this top and my original plan was to embroider some yellow flowers, like maybe along here or maybe just in the top corner, a cluster of three. But I was looking through my projects and I forgot that I had actually made a ton of these little flowers like six months ago and it's actually in the same yarn colors so now I feel like I should use these because they're just too perfect and it would be a cute little 3d thing going on um, I was messing around with the bottoms and I really liked how they look on here I think this is so so cute so I might end up doing this instead I'm going to play around with everything and come up with a little configuration that I like and I'll probably just sew these on. I also left a long string at the end of each one so it'll be easy to attach. I decided that I'm going to go kind of minimal and put two on each side of the front of the bikini and I'm not going to put any flowers on the top. I just think it looks nicer that way. Here is how I'm going to attach them. I am just going to thread a darning needle with the string and sew it on. It's pretty simple. I'll just be going probably in the second stitch on this band here and just going back and forth a few times. like so and then after I go back and forth a few times I'll just knot it at the back and weave in the end. I learned to make these flowers from a YouTube video so I can link that down below. Here we go, they're all finished. I didn't mention before, but since I made the strings shorter in the front, I am going to be tying the bow right at the flowers. So it's kind of wraps around the body and then ties in the front and it looks super cute. I wanted to go take some videos and pictures down at our pool today, but it's raining, so I'll probably just do something in the house, but I can't wait for you to see how they turned out, and I hope you enjoyed this. Why are you going back and forth? I can't keep up with your mood swings. What is trouble? Amazing.